This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2. I'm playing with the Link Mermel deck yet again. Uh, I haven't made any changes to the list, the list that I literally put together in five minutes to be a skeleton list to play for, uh, for just uh, some videos. Uh, the main reason I'm filming this video in particular is because uh, I'm testing some new mic settings, compressor settings, on uh, OBS Studio, and I need to uh, have some sort of way to test that out. So, if the audio recording is good, then you'll get a uh, another Mermel video. If it's not good, then ha ha, um, we'll just pretend this never happened. But, my opponent has gone set 5 in a 60 card deck. I've opened triple Megalo. Alright. I see. All right. Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do Gund and Megalo discard for the Megalo, and see what happens here. Um, if this if this goes anywhere other than badly, I would be incredibly shocked. Um, but uh, but so this Gund is going to bring back a Megalo regardless of what happens. Uh, this is a bottomless. Okay, fair. That doesn't really do anything for for you as far as me putting this other Megalo on the field, and from here I'd be able to summon this other Aqua Spirit, um, aha, okay, so he is just playing Paleo, alright, good to know, um, I could summon this other Megalo, or I could just special summon this, um, and just poke, I think that's how this is gonna go, uh, the Sphere loses a lot of value, uh, because this is a Paleo matchup. So that's a problem. Uh, but what is this? It's tag and defense begins half its current tag and defense till the end of the turn. All right. Cool. Uh, so now there's that. No, I will not do a replay. And then main phase two. I guess I might as well set the sphere just so I could use it for like game push. But I already have all three megalos in circulation. So like all sphere can get is uh, is like Teus, Pike, Turge, and Lind. Um. So there's not really a lot that I can do from that aspect. Uh, Olenoids. Hmm, well I might as well go ahead and chain it. Because if anything, like, he's still going to get his trap from Grave. But in this regard, if he really doesn't want me to resolve this, then this has to be something. Um, and so what this allows, this allows me to, uh... This allows me to go into Lind. Lind will die. Um... And then, uh... And then the Lind can activate its effect to special. And what I'll do is I'll add... I'll su I'll su I can summon Pike. Pike would ditch and add Marksman. Um, he can make a totally awesome here uh, and beat over my Megalo. But I'm not sure how this is going to work for me in my favor. Let's see, this is that, so I can discard the Moulin Glace, which I don't think is going to be too valuable. Um, uh, fuck me. I could just drop this in defense mode and make him have to deal with it. I'm, I'm really confused as to what I want to be doing. Uh, shit. You know what? I will summon Pike, I'm going to ditch the Moulin, and I'm going to add another copy of Gund. Because if I draw another water, then I'd be able to discard Gund and another card for uh, Megalo. And then the Gund would be able to bring another Megalo back from my graveyard. Uh, so that's how I deal with like a totally awesome situation. Um, because he has to kill... Uh, he has to make like a totally awesome and kill these. Or he can make Opa Binia and uh, just start getting extra cards. Okay, he is just making Toad. Very good. Very good! Alright. So, Toad can attack over... Toad kind of has to attack over the Abyss Megalo. Otherwise, I get to make a rank 4 next turn, and that inherently outs the, the Toad. So this is actually just really good. This is a lot better for me than I thought it was. Um, so yeah, he has to attack either the Megalo or one of the 4s, because if I if he leaves the 4s, I'm just going to make Bahama Shark and attack over the Toad, or at least try to. Right? Um... But I can just flip Megalo next turn, kill the dupe frog that he's going to summon out of his deck um, with Toad. And then, let's see, Mander. Alright, well, that's not the best top deck in the situation, but it's definitely something I can work with. 
Um, and I can use this gun that's being discarded off Megalo to bring back... Actually, that Mander's really good, because I can bring back the Mander. That's a thought. Um, oh, he's summoning Swap Frog, so he's not even going for... Not even going for uh, a Dupe Frog to protect the Toad from the Megalo that he knows is face down. Very interesting. Alright, well, I'm gonna change this Megalo's position. And from here, I can use this Megalo dumping gun, dumping Mander, and that can uh, that can make some good things for me to use. So I will activate this, discarding those to summon the Megalo. And this kind of baits whatever these two traps are. The only thing that I would really lose to here is if these traps are um, is if these if any of these traps are uh, like. A mirror force? Actually, I could play around that. I could 100% play around that. Um, he took my Megalo, and so yes, I will use Gun's Effect. I'm going to use it to bring back the Mander. Because if I do this, I can make Bahamut, I can go ahead and make Toad. I can attack his Toad, and then we're just going to have a Toad off. Um, that seems like it's the way that this could go. Or I can make Dweller. I could just make Dweller and beat over Toad. Uh, but in that case, that makes it to where... Um, let's see, if I make Dweller, I can't kill my Megalo. Um, I'd have to attack the Toad, and then the Megalo would stay. So yeah, it's definitely it's definitely Bahamut Toad. Uh, but I can't even make Bahamut Toad. So I think I have to make Dweller. <laughs> this sucks for me. I can't go into Bahamut Toad with these two. So I can make him a Starboy, or I can make Dweller, and I think I'll just go into the Dweller. Because the Dweller can go up here, I can uh, I can battle phase over this totally awesome, and hope to the cosmos that, uh, that I don't have to- well this actually- what is this? Hallucigenia? Um, yes, I would like to chain, uh, just so he doesn't get any traps back, because I have the first opportunity to chain to this. Um, and so now, um, I'm just going to suicide into this, because my opponent has one card. This is a bad move. This is 100% a bad move. He could just beat me with my own Megalo. I'm going to put him on better habit. Better fucking habit. I need to get that Toad off the board before the, before the Megalo. Um... So I'm down to no cards now, but my hand was not good to play this hand. Uh, my hand was not good to play this game. Triple Megalo, Mooling Lace Gunned. Like, that's not good. Um, you need an Eptibus or something. So he's just gonna flip Megalo, and then he's just going to poke me with it, which is fine. Um, I am playing a combo deck, so I definitely need two turns to reestablish, but this game is probably already lost. I'll just go for game two and game three. Because I've got Twin Twisters, and I think I still have Decrees in the side deck of this deck, too. I haven't changed it at all, so there is a possibility. But so, I've got one more turn of this hitting me. So he didn't even draw, he didn't even draw a trap to set. That is a Neptibus. That is such a good card to have drawn, but it's not a good card to have drawn because I'm out of Megalos. My Megalos are here. I'm gonna have to think of what to do with this one. So that's 24. Um, let's, let's just see if he kills me, uh, because if he hits me with 24, that puts me at, like, 1850. Um, so he can't kill me with a trap, but what he could do is he could summon Ronin Toten. Okay, he, he, he understands the play. Yeah, he understands. He under, he understands how that works. So, I'm not gonna waste any more time, I'm just gonna surrender and go to game two and three. So, uh, Paleo as a deck. I'm going to be going first, which is something I need to keep in mind. Um, I'm going first, so I'm going to take out Maxi. I don't want him to resolve uh, Grass, because he is playing 60 cards. Um, Heavy Infantry is also not that good of a card here. Marksman is a little bit better, so we'll swap those. Um, I want the Decrees in my main deck, so I'll put Decree in, Decree in. And I will take out... I'll take out the Turge, just because it's not needed for a long resource game if I'm just trying to get him to, like, lose immediately. And I can take out the Sphere, 
Although the sphere is a searchable out to something, so I don't really want that to be gone. I guess I'll take out the upstart. Um, I don't really want to cut any monsters when I'm trying to, like, just have a monster-heavy hand game whatnot. Oh, yeah. Well, no, Lind is still in the deck because floaters are fine against this deck. Uh, but I will go first, and I will attempt to do things. Things of a variety. I have Soul Charge, and I have Neptibisteus. Big boy, we're going in. We're going to do some plays. We're going to make you understand. Uh, Alright, so Cindragoons, add Dragoons, and then Dragoons triggers, searching for Megalo, then I discard for Teus, and then I get Max Seed and I cry. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's not anyone else's problem other than my own. <laughs> uh, so we'll attempt to activate this. No Max Seed, please, in your 60 card deck. Thank you. All right, so now Dragoons will activate, this will activate, so now Neptibus plus, um, Neptibus plus Gund, uh, so Gund, and Neptibus, the thing is I've got Soul Charge too, so I should be able to make, like, another Toad, so I should be able to make Double Toad, um, pretty easily, um, and the thing is I could actually, like, make Firewall Dragon into another Firewall Dragon, uh, and then, like, Soul Charge it back into the zones that are occupied, um, so that's something else to, uh, to keep track of, but, so I'll go into, uh, Miss Starboy. Actually, no. Miss Starboy is not the play here. Is it? Um, no, Miss Starboy is the play. I've got the Soul Charge. Um, I have the Soul Charge, so it's going to be completely fine for, uh, for doing what I need to do. So I'll discard Guns, and I can actually discard Pike, and that would actually work out better for me, because it would bring one of the, uh, the Dragoons back, which I could use, uh, at an earlier time, but this is gonna bring back that, 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 that. No, it needs to be Prince, because I cannot bring back Pike here, um, unless I want to Soul Charge early, which I don't. Spoiler alert, I do not want to, uh, I don't want to Soul Charge early, when I can definitely avoid it. Um, but so, I'll activate Gund, and I'll activate Megalo. Um... So I'm just going to... Okay, he's Ghost ogre my Megalo. Okay, so now... Who the fuck go... Who, who keeps in Ghost Ogre against a Mermel deck? What is this? <laughs> What's going on here? Alright, so Dragoons will be summoned over here. Right. So now what I can do is I can actually just Soul Charge because he's, he's done things that I don't really care for. But it's fine. Because um, I, uh, I can make Gaia Saber with these... Um, that would point down. I can make, then I could, uh, Soul Charge back and get, uh, Tomahawk and then make Proxy Dragon and do shit like that. Um, he's, he's done some things to me that I don't appreciate, but I can work with this. Potentially. That's the, that's the thing we're going with here, is the potential to work with things. I think. <laughs> um, this is bad for me. Let's see. I can Soul Charge, I can make Decode Talker, uh, I can make Proxy Dragon. I can go ahead and make Proxy Dragon now, and that would work out even better for me, so I will do that. So we'll do Proxy Dragon with these two. Proxy Dragon, and then Soul Charge. How many do I have in Grave? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Waters in Grave, so I'm going to bring back... I'm going to bring back Dragoons, Dragoons, Megaloteus. I'm going to bring back four. Um, and so what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to go into Bahamut Toad, right? Um, and that should make a Mulan Glace live at some point. Um, Megalo can go over here. I definitely just want the, uh, the Dragoonses to go into two of my extra zones so that they make one live. So there's that, and that puts those in Grave, uh, which means that now I go into a Bahamut Shark with these two to summon a toad and that will put four in grave and then what I could do is I could um, I can link with Let's see this is this is four right yeah it's four so I can link with proxy and Mr. boy into a firewall um, and then that would uh, that would put me up to five, and then I could drop Moulin Glaze. So yeah, we'll do that. Um, or I could just make another uh, Decode Talker. 
That could be the. That's probably the better play. If I could go into, I could go into. Actually, Gaia Saber is just the better play. Cause if I go into Gaia Saber, uh, that opens up this for the Galaxy Tomahawk, and then I can uh, summon things. Yeah. All right. So we'll go into uh, Gaia Saber here, because I don't want to give my opponent extra zones. Um, and I'll special summon this Mooling Glaze. Take two cards. He's already at a minus one because he ghost ogred me. Um, and so now I have access into uh, Galaxy Tomahawk, which I don't actually need. I can make Flare Metal. Um, I don't have another Proxy Dragon, though. That's the problem, uh, is that I could make Firewall with these, but I don't necessarily want to. I guess I will just make Flare Metal uh, and leave this on the board. That way my opponent has to deal with this, has to deal with a Sphere. Um, there's a lot of things my opponent has to deal with here that I think works out just heavily in my favor. So yeah, we'll just make Flare Metal. Um, no, no need to fuss about it. We'll just make Flare Metal. And then ne the following turns we could do something like, uh, like making a, uh, a Decode Talker or Firewalls or whatever. That Ghost Ogre actually really hurt the plan because the plan was to combo off and then Soul Charge. Uh, but now it's just... Now, it, it, everything got thrown out of whack because of that. And it wasn't something that I was expecting or planning for. Which kind of sucks, but at the same time, works out fine, I guess. But, so, he's setting these cards. Um, I'm going to physically turn my Toad to the fence position, potentially. Um, well, the thing is, do I care about the Swap Frog? No, I don't. That Swap Frog does nothing. Um, if there was another water paired with it, I would definitely negate the Swap Frog, but... At this point, he's just going to bounce the Swap Frog, and I'll use Toad to negate one of these traps. And then at this point, this game is pretty heavily in my own favor. Um, but I can use a Sphere to force my way through one of his traps that's in the grave as well. Uh, there's, there's a fantastic amount of things that I have access to here. Um, this can't be destroyed by card effects. These all are good for, uh, for battle-oriented stuff. Um, I can actually go ahead and activate this just to get a new set of cards in my hand, so I will. Um, just because it, it puts an extra card in my hand, um, uh, because these going back to deck and this being set just automatically puts me here. So this is another Mori of Greed, which, let's, let's be real, I actually rather would just activate because I want to, like, dig for, like, a roll of decree or something in case this game doesn't end this turn. Um, and there it is. Alright. And so now I can actually one for one into Neptibus and go Marksman. Ah, it's fantastic. All right, so we uh, we yoloed our way through this one, but works out fine for me. Uh, so Neptibus can go here, and I can use Neptibus to marksman one of them away. Then Toad deals with the other, and then just inherently this game is over. Um, so Paleo is one of those weird decks that has a lot of problems going second against oppressive ass things, which is definitely what my deck qualifies as is very oppressive. Um, and this deck actually, the Mermel deck actually is really well suited going second against Paleo as well. Uh, oh, a warning. Interesting. Alright, so my opponent is surrendering. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Fantastic. Alright, so I'm going second against this, so I'm going to take out these decrees. Uh, I'm going to put back in the Max C, and I'm going to put, uh, in... I could put in, I could put in Gamma Seals, um, and it's definitely an option. You know, take out Mulin because that card is a brick against a deck that literally sets every card and tries to activate Card of Demise. Uh, I could leave in the Sphere, I could leave in the Lind to be a floater, but I don't know if those are good options or ideas. Um, I'd rather just have more cards I could discard, but at the same time I do have that in the form of the Gamma Seals. Uh, I could take out the Osha Engine as well. Um, there's not a lot going for it going second either. I think I just really want a large amount of things that just deal with things, but Heavy Infantry can only really pop Toad. This is a pickle. You know what? I'm just gonna go with this. It's been a long time since I played the Mermel vs. Paleo matchup. The last time I played it was YCS Anaheim 2016. Oh, and even then, it was kind of a weird one. That was before Master Rule 4. Um, but... And that was when we had Norton too, man. That was such a different. That was such a different deck dynamically than the one I'm trying to play right now. So even that isn't like a valid thing to start working around with. All right, my opponent going to show up for this, please. Please show up. I would love to finish out this game in this match. Um, 
of Paleo versus Mermel in some way. Yes, thank you. And I have opened Double Twin Twister against the Paleo deck. Hell yes. And he's desiring. Okay. So good. So I actually want him to do something like resolve, um, like resolve card of demise or something, because that means he'll have no cards in hand. Um, I'll try to act, I'll try to um, bait one of the traps, and then I'll chain my double twin twisters on the remaining four. Um, is how this is gonna go. Uh, I've got Diva. I've got Neptibus. Um, if I draw water, I'm going to play the Moray of Greed first. There we go. Um, I'm gonna play the Moray. Well, I was going to play the Moray. Um, now I can chain Twin Twister. Um, and I will discard... I can discard Neptibus. Um, and then I can discard Gund. Um, I'll target these two. And then, if he chains these two, what is this? Um, okay. Can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Okay. Cool beans. Um, so I'm actually going to wait here, because what happens is that if he activates these trap cards, um, if I leave these if I leave these on the board, um, and he activates either of them, then uh, what I'll be able to do is just chain Twin Twister. Okay, that's a lost win. Um... That actually works out so well for me! That works out so well! The only thing I need to wor be worried about is if one of these is like Solemn Strike. In which case, that is gonna suck. It's going to literally be the worst. Um, it's a skill drain. We'll chain this! We'll do it! I'll discard the Moray, because at this point it doesn't matter. So we'll get rid of these two. Um, he's probably gonna chain this and bring back one of his traps from Grave, but at this point... I think this constitutes a blowout, because I summon Neptibus, send it, what is Dynamiscus? Okay, so he gets to banish my D.Va. Neat. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Easy. Alright. So now we kill him. And he discarded a Drollenlock bird, which is 100% better for him to have kept. This just worked out well in my favor. This worked out so far in my favor that it hurts. Uh, so discard Dragoons, add Dragoons. The Dragoons adds Megalo. And then I just get to drop Megalo and kill him. Um, Fan-fucking-tastic, mate. Um, insane. Insane turn of events. Uh, yes, I will activate this. 100%. Uh, to get Sphere. And so now I get to get... Uh, I can get Marksman. Uh, which I could utilize in my endeavors. Because I have the Sphere. Which means that I can just in phase his nonsense out and down. Um, so we'll get this out of the way. The Neptibus will bring back the Dragoons. The only way I see myself losing this game is if he literally top decks part of Demise. That's the only way I see myself losing this game in any capacity. He has to top deck part of Demise. Um, I've already normal summoned, so I can't do anything else. If I had drawn, instead of Neptibus, if I had drawn any Mermel monster that I could have discarded off that first Twin Twister, this would be 100% game. Oh, the, the Dragon Lord's card is saving him. Ah, cool. Alright, neat. Um, okay, so that actually does change some things. That means he could top deck a uh, Swamp Frog and make, um, and make totally awesome. But... I don't think that would be a factor, because that means he would kill Dragoons, but then, like, I have Megalo plus Sphere. So I don't think that's a huge factor how this goes. It's definitely preventing him from taking a lot of damage. He's taken only 4,000 instead of the full 24 twice. He took 24 off of this instead of 48. Um, but if he draws a card and sets it, um, then in phase or before he... Uh, well, the thing is, it's not even... I'll have to do it during my turn. Um, okay, grass looks greener. Sure, that does nothing for you until you mill Frog plus, uh, plus Ronin Toten, which you did not mill. Good shit. Gotta be lucky to be good, and today is not your day to be lucky. Uh, top deck the one grass. That's actually kind of respectable. Um, he milled the Mize, he milled a bunch of stuff. Um, I mean, even if you did mill Ronin, this game was still over. 
uh, if you still milled Ro if you um, if you had still milled Ronin, all you would have been able to do is make totally awesome. Totally awesome kills my dragoons, yes. Um, and then you pass turn, and then during my standby phase, you uh, you get a uh, dupe frog out of your deck. I still have a megalo on the field, and I've got a sphere set that you know about. So I just go megalo attack into uh, I can I can just uh, megalo attack the dupe frog, um, and then flip sphere to bait your toad going to grave, and then uh, and then from there whatever card in my hand is what makes that. Uh, actually, it would be kind of problematic. I'd have to normal summon the marksman. Um, and do things. Actually, I don't know how that'd play out. It depends on really heavily on what card I draw. Actually, thinking about it. So yeah, that actually was a pretty, a pretty, uh, pretty scary situation. Now thinking about it, actually taking time to dissect the situation, that was actually a kind of a problem. If he had milled Ronin, um, if he milled Ronin plus Frog, because that would be a totally awesome. That'd have to get through a Duke Frog to kill, um, and then I'd have to it would put me on having to draw. Um, I'd have to draw like Neptabus. Or something that would just get it off the board. I have to, or Gamma Seal would work. I have those in my deck. Uh, there's a few different things that could have happened, but it really puts it a really heavy emphasis on what I have to draw. Um, so yeah, I actually don't like that. My chances of that one nearly as much as I thought I did. But anyway, whatever. As always, guys, that is going to be it for this video. I hope the audio quality was good enough to use it for a video because this is a 30 something minute match video, right? 26 minutes? So we could work with this. And this is actually like a relevant match that could be played. So. That's actually really nice. I really like that, and I really like how these games played out as well. It was very, it was very Yu-Gi-Oh at times. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links as always are in the description to my Facebook fan page and my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Also gets you access into rewards of your own, like entry into a raffle giveaway that happens every month for a sizable amount of Yu-Gi-Oh product, or entry into my private Discord server, where me and a bunch of other people chat on a daily basis about Yu-Gi-Oh and various other fandoms. So if any of that interests you, then definitely go check out the Patreon link in the description down below. But special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You have about a lot more than you may know in terms of keeping this channel alive, and you have, as always, my eternal gratitude and my deepest thanks. But other than that, as I've already said, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, thanks for your time, and as usual, take care. I'll see you in the next video.